This is exercise 4.11, longest name. Asks us to write a static method, name longest name. So we're gonna have a public, it's gonna be a static void as of now. We're gonna have longest name. We'll see if we have any parameters. Um, reads names typed by the user and prints the longest name. The name that contains the most characters in the format is shown below. So our method should accept a whole scanner and an integer n as parameters. That means inside of here, we're gonna have a scanner We'll just call this console since that's what it is here. And then we will have our int n inside of here. So this is going to be our method header. Now we need a for loop because we need to ask this as many times as we have this integer n here. So we're gonna have a for, we're gonna do some arbitrary number. We're gonna have int a is equal to zero and we're gonna run this as long as a is less than our n. And we're actually gonna incorporate this a inside of here. It's gonna be incremented every single time. And that's easy because that's in our for loop header. So what we can do is instead of have this at zero, we're gonna have it as one because it starts at one. We'll have a plus plus so we can eventually break out and increment. And then we're gonna be inside of here. So we're gonna have a system.out.print, not line, because um, we are going to want this, uh, which is the user input on the same line as all of this. So yeah, system.out.print, um, we're gonna have our name, this should be in quotes because it's going to be a string. We'll have the hashtag or pound, and then we need the number. So we will do, we're going to append an A to it. And then after this, we're going to have our question mark and then simply a space. So I don't know what I did there, but question mark. Oh, we're going to have a question mark and then a space. And then we are going to end this line. So that's out for our system.print. Now we need to have our scanner pick up this user input. So we're going to have not, we don't need to make a new scanner because we're passing in the scanner right here. Uh, if we didn't pass in a scanner, we might have to make a new scanner to get user input, but we don't need to do that here. So instead we are just going to store this inside of something. Since we are changing names every single time, I'm just going to call it current. We are going to get string current and we're going to set it equal to the next name. So we are going to use console.next and that will give us the next thing. Once we have this next, we need to evaluate it. So there's two things that we need to do. We need to see if the, there's a whole, we can read all of this about what happens if there's a tie, but basically um, there's a tie between the longest two or more names, use the tied name that was typed the earliest and then print out saying that there was a tie. So we need to see if there is a tie. Well, there's a tie if two names are equal to each other. So we are going to say if our current is equal to, and we need somewhere to store our longest name. So we need to make this outside of our for loop because we're going to do it when we print this out, we're gonna use it. We'll do string, we'll call this longest and we'll set it equal to basically nothing. So if current is equal to our longest, well then we know we have a tie. So we're going to be inside of here and we are going to set tie, which needs to be a Boolean because we can, or it, it can be something else, but we'll choose a Boolean. Basically, if there is a tie, that's true. If there is not a tie, that's false. So we will do a Boolean. We'll do tie is equal to false. We'll initialize it to false. But if our current is equal to the longest, that means we do have a tie. So tie is equal to true. And that's going to be that if statement. Now, we also need to see if, since we go through this multiple lines, the next thing, we need to see if the next thing is greater than the previous thing. The way we can do that is with another if statement. We're going to say if the current is greater than our longest, we're going to be inside of here. First things first is that we obviously don't have a tie anymore. So tie is going to be equal to false. We can end this line, come down here, and then we are just going to store our current inside of longest. So now longest is going to equal current. And that's going to end that if statement. That's all we need with this method so far right here. We've done these two different cases, which we've put in if statements, and we are finished with this for loop once we run through it the entire time. So now we're done, we can come down here and we just need to print this out. Well, we can see that we have some casing issues and that's described more in here. Basically, the first letter needs to be capitalized and the rest needs to be lowercase. So what we can do is have a system dot out dot print that does this, but I'll also make this a print line. 
instead of just going straight into here, we can make a string that uses substrings. And there's a video about this on a how-to playlist with Java. And using substrings, we'll do string, we'll call it all, and we'll set it equal. And instead of this equals, we know we need our longest, right? But we only need the first letter to be uppercase. So we're gonna do longest dot. And when we do substrings, we do sub string, no like casing or anything. And then inside of here, we're gonna have parameters. We're gonna have the thing we start at and the thing we end at. So we only want the first letter. So we're gonna take this zero index and then we're gonna stop at this one index right here. So that's how that substring would work. And we need to make it uppercase. So we're gonna do dot two upper case. Now we can append to this the rest of it. So we are going to do longest dot substring. And whenever we just append the rest, we're only putting where our starting index is. So we're gonna have one, and then we do dot two lower case. And that should be it for all right here. That should be all for a substring converting it. So we're gonna have all right here. And that's just going to print that out. And then we can print this apostrophe S name is the longest inside of quotes right here, just like that. After we do that, we need to see if there was a tie or not. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna say, well, if um, our tie is equal to true, or we can just say if tie, we're gonna be inside of here. We're going to do a system dot out dot print line where we just say that there was a tie. We could just copy that from the example right here. And so that should be all for this if statement. And that'll be all for this method. So the biggest part in here was this for loop and then the substring part right here. If we click submit, um, we have an error right here. And that's because current is currently a string. What we need to do is do current dot length. So we get the length. So we'll go in here and in here, and then we'll try to run it again. And it still says incompatible types because we also need to do longest dot length because longest we can see is a string. So when we were making these, we could have stored them in ints and just do the dot length up there, but we can also do this as well. Actually, it might be a little easier if we do it the way that we have done it right here. Then we can click submit and we can look down here and we have some name out of bounds. Um, we're missing something actually. We only go up to four when we have five. And that's because normally uh, when I start four loops, I start at zero, but since we're incorporating it here, I bumped it up to one. And so if we move it up, we have to set this as less than or equal to our n. So now if we submit it, we will not be out of range and then we can run it again. And we've passed all five out of five tests. So this is the code, the for loop and if statements, and also the substring that'll solve for this exercise 4.11, which is the longest name.